Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of the Guardian Project Podcast. This is episode 156, and I'm your host, Andy. This show's Fur Bulg Flutist. Oh, you're a flutist, you say? <laughs> you know what's funny? I, I self-taught a little in high school how to play flute. My, pa- my parents had a flute because they mm. played when they were in high school. Uh, I was never very good at it, but I would argue that I'm a fl- flautist. Yes, if you if you also eat desserts at the same time, you could be I think a the only piper. thing. Yeah, I think the only <laughs> yeah the only thing that I learned how to self t- like that I taught myself was part of my high school show's marching band show, which was um, Pirates of the Caribbean. Oh. So I like know part of he's a pirate on the flute. That's as much as I know. He's a pirate. Fun and, fact. And I'm your other host, Mike. <laughs> So I built a dice rolling deck and I found it to be very motivating. When you first roll at life doesn't turn out great. You must have the will blade of frontiers to try again. Please listen carefully. And this is the podcast where we talk about all things magic, the gathering, but mostly commander. And we're back this week. Sorry for being absent for a week. I was out of town. My brother is getting married. Um, And uh, I got home and felt really bad. And I hadn't felt really bad for a long time. Um, And I thought it was, honestly, it was the same symptoms that I always get when I get walking pneumonia. So I've had that Mm -hmm. like... I don't, I don't know if I've ever talked about this on the show. I've had walking pneumonia five times. And fun fact is not... Actually, not fun. Fact when you get pneumonia, you get scarring in your lungs. Ooh. And so I've had it so many times, the doctors are like, you need to tell people when you go in to get x-rays now, because it will be alarming for them to see that many scars. And mm-hmm. I said, oh, okay. So I thought I was getting pneumonia. Turns out it was COVID. Yeah. Two and a half years, two and a half years I made it, two vaccinations, one booster, finally got it. It's not fun, anybody. No. No. Oh my gosh. So I was out of commission. I was like, I'm going to make it. No, I can make it. And then I text Mike. I was like, I'm not going to make it. I can't <laughs> record tonight. And so we were going to record later and just release a late episode last week. Mm-hmm. And then that day came around and I was like, no, if you try to record right now, it's going to be every other word is just going to be a cough. <laughs> so let's just wait a week. And so we're back now. So thanks everybody for your patience while we were uh, away for a week. Yes, yes. Thank you. And to all of our patrons who are at the specified tier, there will be a Guardian Project podcast button coming your way uh, or a pin. I don't really know what the exact definition of this this thing is. I think yours, I think what we have is buttons. Okay, we I think have they're technically buttons. They're buttons, they're pins. We would like to look at enamel pins, but right now we're sending out buttons. So That's right. You, we're getting one. It's in the mail. Yeah, you should have it in the next two weeks, hopefully. They're one of three colors, and you should definitely compare it with each other and laugh at other people that didn't get the color that they wanted and you did. So do that, please. Thank <laughs> laugh you. at them? Laugh what are the them. three colors that we mailed out? We mailed out black, green, and purple. Um, so if you do have exclusive um, printer misprints of like the <laughs> yellow and pink ones, those are one of a kind. <laughs> It was what, when you said when the green and the purple ones were running out, they turned into pink and yellow? Yes, they did. Yep. Very limited quantity. Very, yes. very limited quantity. Um, I also want to say thank you to um, our lovely listener and patron, Draco Lucian, who sent me this really awesome foil-signed artist-proof Noyandar Royal Shaper. I love this so much. And now this is the third uh, version of Noyandar that I can use as my commander because I, I have a regular foil. And then I had um, one of our local artists actually do like paint and all, uh, like alt, um, an alter... Uh, alter it i don't know Mm -hmm. i don't know what i was trying to say there i had them alter it so it was like a an extended border so now this is my third so thank you so much i um am surprised these are still i mean this is an older card now Mm -hmm. so i don't know i'm surprised it's not in higher demand (laughs) everyone's looking (laughs) for the noyandar artist prints of course yes um so uh talking about some products we actually finally have a release date for infinity what was originally supposed to be released on april 1st of this year is now going to be released on october 7th so we have that to look forward to um you know, in four months time, less Un- than four months. Infinity is the, uh, yeah, our space carnival unset that will have Shockland reprints in them. Yes. So yes. And it- black border cards that we can use without having to do a rule zero uh, in commander. So that should and be And other black border cards that will have a giant acorn stamp that you will still have to have that conversation. About. Yes. Yeah. You'll probably so still want to do that. You still want to do that. Um, 
I can't believe there was this much like stuff that we missed over over two weeks. But yeah. we have a lot of secret layer stuff happening. So we've been talking about the Beetle and Grimm secret layer. So if you're in our Discord, you already saw this. Um, but it is available now, um, and it is actually sold out. So it w- it came and went June thirteenth. So if you listen to our show, it was yesterday um, that we were, uh, or I guess last earlier this week. Uh, if you're listening to the date that this uh, comes out, but uh, that secret layer uh, came with Old Nawbone, Tiamat, Even Death, Draco Lich, Inferno of the Star Mounts, Imerith Desert Doom, Icing Death Frost Tyrant, the Icing Death Frost Tongue Token, um, a Beetle and Grimm's deck box with like dragon scales on it, an Inferno of the Star Mounts um, uh, sleeves, and then also a Metal Dragon dice counter. And it does say that there will be one card that you have to open to uh, see what it is. Um, and I, on one of their images, they had a card that had like a mana value three colorless. Mm-hmm. So I'm wondering if it's like that dragon horde yeah, card. Probably. Dragon, is it called dragon horde? Dra- dragon? Dragon's horde. It's possessive. Dragon's horde. Just like dragons. They're very possessive. D- did you buy this? Uh, so, um, I told you I had some words about this. We, we were, we were potentially talking about this right before the, the show started. We we're like, no, don't do it. Let's wait for the show. I'm having FOMO like real hard. Uh, about not buying this because um you know people are already like relisting them for super high prices people seem to really like what's going on here the life counter seems really cool the deck box seems really cool the sleeves seem really cool and old Nawbone is the only dragon i play out of any of these and that's the whole reason why i didn't get it um so if i wasn't going to put it in a deck i was like uh it probably probably better to spend my money elsewhere is what i said yeah i so i run icing death in neon b okay. i don't know if it's good but i already run that um and then i don't have a tiamat and i have an i only have one old knob on mm-hmm. i did snag this one so yeah. i scooped this up only got one copy it looks like you could have bought up to f- up to 10 10, 10 yeah could have bought up to 10 but this one had um ten thousand printed this is like mm-hmm. our first secret layer that has a limited quantity so um i will let you know once i open it what the um the contents or what that that extra that extra one is but we also have the june super drop for 2022 which has again a a bundle of cards so the first one here is the artist series of volcan baga which includes elspeth knight errant patron wizard berserk and verdurin enchantress I actually like this one a lot. I don't have a Berserk and Verdure and Enchantress I can finally get like in Black Border that isn't like a really old, mm-hmm. I think 8th edition foil or something like that. And the artwork's really good on them. I also don't have Patron Wizard. So this this one I think is actually decent value if you if you don't have these cards. Yeah, yeah, super cool. Uh, the next one we have is Artist Series Chris Ran. This one includes a Kozilek, the Great Distortion, a Primeval Titan, a card that is not legal in Commander, uh, Master of the Fells, and Platinum Angel. Um, these are really cool. I know, um, I think, Andy, you particularly like Huntmaster, don't you? Isn't this like one of your like, it is. fun so cards? Huntmaster's, yeah, Huntmaster is really cool in Tovalar, um, but it has a from the vault transform version, which is the one that I play oh, from. Oh, okay. So it already has. So this is our second cool, like, alternate art version but Kozilek's a really good one because i don't have one and i also don't have one in foil which i like yes yeah so cool to see that titan here yeah we have artist series uh livia prima which includes a chroma angel of wrath Micaeus the unhallowed glissa sunseeker and olivia mobilized for war i actually play uh olivia mobilized for war which seems funny because most people don't and then i play Micaeus the unhallowed if you don't have a Micaeus, getting a foil alt Micaeus for 29.99 is actually a pretty good deal i don't run a chroma and i don't have a deck for glissa but i know glissa is a really strong commander so. yeah this seems like a really cool deck to build too, glissa and the art's really good on these yeah they really are like really really good uh, so we also have the Tokyo land. So uh, take a trip to Tokyo with these stunning real world inspired lands. Highly experienced tour guides will be artist Rosemary Valero O'Connell, Andy Williams, Miss Mai Sang, uh, Yume, and Nicole Gustafsson, and Marisa Turinia. Sorry for butchering any of those names. Uh, that is featuring a full art uh, plains, island, swamp, mountain, and forest. 
um, depicting uh, some different things that you could find around the city of Tokyo, which seems very I like, cool. I like these a lot, actually. I, I don't buy any of the basic land ones. I think, unfortunately, I just for five lands, it's the $30 is just not it for me. Yep. Um, but if you do go hard on these, um, see, I bought the I bought the full text one. So, I mean, mm. they got me mm. once. I can't get me with all of the basic lands. We also have one called Rule the Room. So, this includes a borderless Brahma's King of Arescos, Arcanus the Omnipotent, uh, Queen Marchesa and Savra, Queen of the Golgaria, which is cool because Savra had spiked at one point, and I don't own a uh, a Savra or a Bramaz, and I I don't believe I own Queen Marchesa. Was Queen Marchesa a um, etched foil in Commander Legends one? It was, yes. The, okay, the then I, I might one have one. Then I just I don't have this as a deck. It's a really strong deck, um, uh, but. Uh, and Arcanus, I, I run in my wizard stack. I, it's a great card. Yeah, yeah. Awesome, awesome stuff. And the last secret layer ha we have here is special guest Kellogg Sloops. I think I love it. I think uh, yeah, it's Kellogg's loops. Yeah. Okay. So that's a, a, a this is an artist an artist in Australia um, that's featuring all the artwork here. Uh, this is has a borderless Mystic Remora retreat to Coral Helm burgeoning and Utopia Sprawl. So very land themed in uh, so Simic land theme type of untap dealios going on here. Uh, I, I mean, I play all of these cards. So these are all. Um, like in in decks, like in some Kodama loop decks and stuff like that. But uh, yeah, I, I think maybe there's not a whole ton of like reprint value here. Mystic Remora is for sure is a, is a cool reprint that we saw here. Um, Burgeoning, I think, is a couple dollars. Utopia Sprawl, I think, recently got a reprint. So this is the second reprint of it, which is pretty nice to have the price come down a little bit. But really awesome artwork. And in my opinion, the most useful of all of these secret layers for me. If my math is correct, I believe that these are all on pre-order until July 11th. Um, we will have that actual official date. Um, and if you follow us on social media, there'll be there'll be tweets and stuff. But we'll also have the links to these in the show notes below. So if you are interested, you can go check them out there. Um, <clears throat> we have some t uh, Oracle text updates for three legendary creatures that came out from battle uh, with Battle for Baldur's Gate, Commander Legends 2. Um, Zelfor, Eturial Exile, Nira, Wild Mage, and Dianir, in Invoker, Adept all had like clarification. So we'll have a link to it below, but it, it really just either wasn't clear or there were words omitted from the printings. Mm -hmm. um, so it... it you know, the, the Zelfor was uh, inadvertently printed without one of the words that was supposed to be on it, the word only, um, which makes it a, a single target requirement. Um, and it reads very oddly. So they they, they did that there. Um, <clears throat> they also said for Nero Wild Mage, it wasn't clear what happens to non-land cards when you reveal if you chose not to cast them. So Nero says when you cast a spell, you may put it on the bottom of your, of, of your library. If you do reveal cards from the top of your library until you reveal a non-land card, you may cast that card with Without paying its mana cost, then put the rest on the bottom of your library in a random order. So um, it, it clarified that. And then um, Dianeer has an ability that once activated will copy only the next ability if you spend at least four mana. However, it was printed without the words that are normally on this kind of an ability that, that stop mana abilities from causing it to trigger. So um, some changes there. We'll also have this in the show notes if, if you built any of these three commanders, because it does appear that um, there have been some clarifications and they do read differently. Yeah, yeah, definitely some Im important additions to that. So I hope it doesn't affect any of the decks that you currently have built. And if it does, time to fix them. Fixing them can be fun too. Don't worry Fixing about it. Fixing is fun. <laughs> we're, we're fixers. Uh, we also have the return of the uh, starter kits coming back. So Magic the Gathering 2022 starter kits have been announced and we've got full deck lists for everything. Um, so we have a blue white starter deck and a red green starter deck that features um, some some okay uh, cards in here. I like seeing uh, Welcoming Vampire and Hallbreaker Horror, Hallbreaker Horror in the uh, white blue starter deck. I don't see too many chase cards in the red green starter deck, but if you're looking to uh, teach someone how to play magic, these are really good ways to do that. Yeah, these remind me of the dual decks, which I loved. I am sad that they went away. And then we had that global series, and oh, then yeah. that went away. Mm -hmm. So now we have these. Um, Hullbreaker Horror and Welcoming Vampire are really, really good in Commander. So yeah, it makes great holiday gifts if you're looking for something. And then they can take those and build a really cool blue-white deck, which I suggest to do in Commander because it's really cool. Mm -hmm, and I mm -hmm. love doing it. Um, <clears throat> but before we continue, we want to thank everybody who's listening. As always, if you would like to support us, you can head to patreon.com slash guardianprojectpod and donate for any dollar amount. 
And if you're looking for another way or an additional way to support the podcast, whatever platform you are listening or watching the podcast on right now, if you're not already subscribed, hit that subscribe button. If you haven't rated the podcast, please give us an honest rating. Uh, If you want to leave a review or a comment, please do so as well. It would be really, really cool. Uh, We'd be most appreciative. We would. And you can find us online if you want to check out any of our other content besides the podcast. We're on YouTube. We're on Instagram. We're on Twitter. If you search Guardian Project Podcast, you can find us there. And you can also email us if you have any stories or things that you want us to talk about. Um, And that is guardianprojectpod at gmail.com. Mike, what are we chatting about this week? Well, uh, as you know, Commander Legends Battle for Baldur's Gate is is completely out. We already talked about some of the cards that we are going to be putting into our decks and some new decks that we're going to be building. We've already brewed it and everything, and and, and we're moving on from that because now we're going to talk about the infinite combos. This is our Commander spell book. Well, not, and maybe not infinite. Maybe that, maybe I'm stepping over a line there, but this is the <laughs> Commander spell book combos episode from uh, Commander Legends Battle for Baldur's Gate. Let's go find out how we're going to beat people. As always, we love talking about Commander Legends uh, Battle for Baldur's Gate. We like talking about combos, and we're back with uh, combos from our favorite website, commanderspellbook.com. Um, also, last time we did this, we tagged them, and they wanted us to include a link to their Discord. So before mm. I forget, if you go to the show notes below, there will be an invite link to their Discord. Go join their Discord. Tell them we sent you, and then also submit a combo that you play in one of your decks. It doesn't have to be new, because then your combo will be put on the website, and you get a really cool, nifty contributor tag uh, in their Discord server. That's true. So go do that. Um, and we... There's a lot of combos oh for Commander Legends 2, okay? There's there's like a lot. Uh, so we're going to cover the ones that were uh, some of our favorites. We're also going to cover ones that aren't painful to listen to that include four and five <laughs> cards. Um, we're going to listen to ones that or, – or, or review ones that include up to three cards. Um, and Mike, why don't you start us off with a Miracle Lord of Bones combo? Yes, Miracle Lord of Bones, one of my new commanders, uh, which I actually don't have this combo in here because I don't know if I – can make use of the result of this combo so let's talk about miracle a little bit miracle is a seven mana legendary creature god so for four white black and green so we're in the abs and colors if this is your commander you get a seven five that says as long as your life total is less than or equal to half your starting life total miracle has indestructible and whenever another non-token creature you control dies you may exile it if you do create a token that's a copy of that card except it's an enchantment and loses all other card types so um, we finally found a card that actually makes Devoted <laughs> Druid go infinite, guys. <laughs> I know. This is like the 10th combo yes, card. <laughs> yes. Overplayed joke, but I will make it every single time. It's And it's funny every time. Right. It's now, funny it, every time. There is something actually pretty cool about this particular Devoted Druid combo. So um, Devoted Druid is a two-mana elf druid for one and a green. It has zero power and two toughness. You can tap to add a green. And has a second ability that says put a minus one, minus one counter on Devoted Druid to untap Devoted Druid. Um, So in this combo, what we're going to do is we're going to have Devoted Druid die in some way while Miracle is out on the battlefield, exiling Devoted Druid, becoming an enchantment. Um, Since that enchantment doesn't actually have power and toughness, we can then tap it and untap it as many times as we want, put as many minus one, minus one counters on it as we want. It'll never die because it doesn't have toughness and we'll be able to produce infinite green Mm -hmm. mana. Uh, The reason I said I liked this combo is because I said Devoted Druid does have to die. And if you don't have Devoted Druid on the battlefield at the beginning of this combo and it's it's in your hand, it doesn't have, or if it has summoning sickness or something like that, you're not going to be able to do this. But if it doesn't, you could just kill Devoted Druid to its own ability to put minus one, minus one counters on it. Actually, I take that back. You can use the second ability of putting minus one, minus one counters on it without actually tapping Devoted Druid. So Devoted Druid could just kill itself. That's why this combo is so cool. So you don't actually need a sacrifice outlet. It is a true, legitimate two-card combo. Are you worried about not having two mana when you're casting a seven mana commander? <laughs> <laughs> no, this is, this is I cast a Miracle and now I cast my Finale of Devastation for X equals 500. Yeah, that does in fact do that. I like, personally, I like two card combos. I don't have an Abzan deck. I, do you? You have Abzan tokens, but I'd be happy to see this turn into a Miracle Devoted Druid combo deck. Yeah, so actually Abzan tokens is becoming Miracle as the commander. So 
Um, it does utilize a lot of enchantments in that, and the creatures are very impactful, and those creatures having static abilities being turned into enchantments is going to be very cool, I think, for me. So my Abzan tokens deck will be helmed by Miracle in the near future. Nice. Well, I am going to talk about a red-black combo. This is with Mahadi Emporium Master. So this is a legendary cat devil. Uh, so it can be your commander for this combo. And it is a 3-3 three, three cat devil for one black and a red. It says at the beginning of your end step, create a treasure token for each creature that died this turn. Works really well with Revel and Riches. It's not infinite. It's not like instantaneous infinite, but it's a combo in that if you can get yourself 10 treasures for your upkeep, uh, you're just going to win the game. So really all you have to do is, is have any combination of treasures or creatures. And if you have a bunch of creatures and you pair it with a card like Ashnod's Altar or, or you pair it with... Um, really any sacrifice outlet. So you can have a Seer, Seer, Phyrexian Altar, Carrion Feeder, Altar of Dementia, Woe Strider, wh whatever combo you would like to use, um, you can assemble 10 treasures for your upkeep. And this ranges anywhere from uh, $20 because um, Revel and Riches is kind of expensive, mm -hmm. all the way up to like $100, depending on the sacrifice outlet that you use because Phyrexian Altar is really expensive yeah eighty dollars for the cheapest version of phyrexian altar it's pretty crazy yeah uh, it's real expensive uh but really cool to see who who to thunk that we would see treasure synergies um in magic the gathering in 2022 it's a lot um <laughs> It's, there's a lot of treasure now. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so let's talk about uh, a black-white combo with Asterion the Decadent, a brand new legendary creature we have. Um, and I love these combos where we're talking about how, how the, this legendary creature can actually be the commander for these. So Asterion the Decadent is a six-mana vampire elf rogue. So for four, a white and a black, you get a four-four with Death Touch and Life Link. It says at the beginning of your end step, choose one. You can either choose uh, food or friends, and food says target opponent it loses life equal to the amount of life they lost this turn and friends says you gain life equal to the amount of life you gained this turn so uh, with this combo and there's definitely uh, many different ways we're going to be able to do it uh, we're going to make one of our opponents lose half of their life so that Asterian's trigger will happen at the end step, making them lose the other half of their life, which is cool. Wow, wow that's, that is actually very cool. Yeah, and I like the fact that there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven different ways to do it. So you could build the deck around this combo um, completely, and you know, you'll have seven ways to to shoot someone dead on any so given much turn. redundancy yes so first we have uh scourge of the skyclaves which is a kicker creature from um zendikar rising um as power and toughness are each equal to 20 minus the highest life total among other players but the important part is, is when this creature enters the battlefield if it was kicked target player loses half their life rounded up you'll see that theme half their life rounded up is actually very consistent which is important for for this type of thing because if it said rounded down then if someone had an odd life total you wouldn't necessarily be able to kill them uh, but scourge of the Cl sky claves has an etb uh, scythe claw is a five mana living weapon enchantment so that means it comes in with a germ token attached to it but you'd be able to attach to any creature you have as long as you deal combat damage with it you'll be able to do that fraying omnipotence is a sorcery that's going to do something similar to that um, peer into the abyss is also a sorcery that one you're also going to be target that target player is also going to be drawing half of their library so yeah make that sure one's really scary yeah don't do that one to the blue player do that one to the mono green player it'll be fine <laughs> it'll be you know what even if you do it to the mono blue player they still have to find an answer now they to do. remove your commander yes so. they do um, there's quite a spike which is another equipment this one is not a living weapon um, there's virtuous the veiled which is one of the uh, partners it's uh, virtuous uh, the Veiled is partnered with Gorm the Great, which is in green, so you won't be able to yeah, play this was the partner. Battlebond, right? Yeah, yes. Battlebond partners with. Cool. Mm -hmm. That's a creature that when it deals damage will do it. And then um, Raving Dead is the last creature here. And Raving Dead is a five mana... 2-6 zombie with death touch that actually attacks randomly. So at the beginning of combat on your turn, you choose an opponent at random and Raving Dead attacks that player this combat. And when Raving Dead deals damage, they lose half their life rounded down. This is the only instance that you'll see the rounded down in these combos. However, since Raving Dead has to deal combat damage, it, all it has to do is deal one damage and then it, it still works. Because they deal one damage, then half their life, then your commander Asterion will take down 
you know, the rest of the half their life oh, plus the one. Yeah, and so, this one's dealing two. It, yeah, so yeah, even if even if there was some minus one minus one counter on it or something, it has yeah. to deal damage to do it. So it will always work this this particular combo. Um, I just wanted to point that out. Uh, but all of these combos are also super super cheap. Um, you can actually run all of them for like twenty bucks in a deck. Um, so yeah, yeah, the scourge one looks like so, and this is combined with the commander and the card. Yes. Yeah, these are very affordable, like three dollars. What the most expensive is which one? The Ver- Virtus the Veiled is Vert- that because oh no, Quietus Spike six dollars. Yep, Quietus Spike six dollars. Yeah, ver- everything in Battle Bond is going up in price though. So yes, that's why Virtus the Veiled is a little bit up there. Um, a, a, a card you don't really see commonly played out in Commander very often, but is from Battle Bond still. So low supply. A little bit higher demand. Yeah, yeah, very, very cool. I like that. I don't. I had a um, a black white deck, and it was um, uh, Karlov of the Ghost Council, mm-hmm. and I was like, Meh, I don't know if I really like this life gain. And I used to have a taste of deck, but this seems very much more up my alley. Yes, lasering people in the face. This is very Goodbye. up your alley. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> See ya. Um, all right, let's switch over to red green with Raga Draga Gore Guts Boss. So there's a lot of combos here. We're not covering all of them today. But again, check out commandersballbook.com for all the others. This one I want to cover is um, <clears throat> with Raga Draga Gore Guts Boss, Marwin the Nurturer, and a sorcery with buyback called Worm Calling. So essentially what we're going to do here is is we're going to be able to make infinite creature tokens green mana make your creatures as big as you want until the end of the turn you can get enter the battlefield triggers storm count it's it's crazy so ragged dragon gorgot's boss is a 4-4 human boar for two red and a green it says each creature you control with a mana ability gets plus two plus two Whenever a creature you control with the mana ability attacks, you untap it, so it's kind of like fake vigilance. And then whenever you cast a spell, if at least seven mana was spent to cast it, you untap target creature, gets plus seven, plus seven, and gains trample until end of turn. So Marwin the Nurture, very popular elf creature, very popular commander or support in a different commander um, who that's focusing on elves, but it's a 1-1 one, one elf druid for two and a green. Um, <clears throat> and she has tap to add green uh, in uh, equal to Marwin's power to mana pool and whenever an elf enters the battlefield you put a counter on marwin uh so it starts out as a one one grows and then can get you just a ton of mana and then a sorcery called worm calling so it is a uh, a sorcery that allows you to put an xx green worm creature token into play by paying x and green but it has buyback for two and green so you can pay into that to put it back in your hand so essentially all you have to do is you have raga draga out you have marwin the nurturer and then you have to be able to pay uh seven mana essentially so you activate marwin by tapping and adding green to uh your mana pool for for its power and then you cast worm calling and you need to pay at least seven mana so not x equals seven but you need to physically pay seven mana into the spell we did get a judge confirmation that Mm -hmm. buyback does count towards this so all you have to do is pay x equals three so that you're paying three plus one for the worm calling physical card at the top Mm -hmm. and then you pay three mana for the buyback so Mm -hmm. it says you paid seven mana to cast a spell um you can untap marwin and give marwin plus seven plus seven and now marwin's tapping for at least i mean at minimum eight eight mana now and then you can just infinitely cast worm calling and buy it buy it back to your hand and each time the the creature gets bigger because marwin (laughs) uh will just continue to get plus seven plus seven Mm -hmm. um it this is really crazy and i have already lost to a raga draga deck and it had marwin in it Mm -hmm. i have no idea if worm calling was in the deck i lost well before it would have mattered (laughs) um i think raga draga is i what from what i've seen and the discussion online was that it was going to be like a meme deck for just like mana dorks right creatures that have mana abilities but if you're playing cards like cryptolith right that Mm -hmm. allows all your creatures to tap for mana that gives them all mana abilities all your creatures now have static plus two plus two yeah i did not see it coming 
Um, this is a really cool combo. Raga Draga has combos in so many decks. Um, uh, there's there's combos here with Bloom Tender, Najila, mm -hmm. Mycosynth Lattice. There's there's a lot. So if you are looking to play Raga Draga, there's a lot of combos also where it can still be your commander. There's uh, combos with Selvala Heart of the Wilds, uh, Heron Blade Elite. So so take a look. But I think this uh, this deck is gonna crush me uh, many more times <laughs> in the near future. Yeah, yeah, I can't imagine it does it. I mean, being able to just untap mana producing creatures and and give stuff plus seven plus seven to trample on a card that only costs four mana seems real strong. <laughs> real strong. Okay, well, let's stay in the red green. Uh, oh, wait, you can do all that for $2.20. Oh, that's what I meant to say. Yeah, that's true. Very affordable for those three cards. Extremely. So let's stay in uh, the Gruel colors, and let's talk about one of our brand new uh, Planeswalkers that can be commanders, and that's uh, Minsk and Boo. Uh, Minsk and Boo, Timeless Heroes. So... Um, I'm just opening up a larger copy of Mints because there's so many freaking words on this card <laughs> and the text is so small. Um, so when so Minsk and Boo, Timeless Heroes is a four mana uh, Planeswalker. So for two, a red and a green, it starts with three loyalty. It says uh, when Minsk and Boo, Tireless Heroes enters the battlefield and at the beginning of your upkeep, you may create a Boo legendary 1-1 one, one red hamster creature token with Trample and Haste. Has a plus one ability to put three plus one plus one counters and up to one target creature with Trample or Haste and minus two to sacrifice a creature and when you do minsk and boo tireless here tireless heroes deals x damage to uh to any target where x is that creature's power if the sacrifice creature was a hamster you then get to draw x cards um this is going to uh, combo with a a creature that's you know many people fear this creature but there is you, you know it's it's probably right to fear it. It's malignous. It's yeah, going to be the biggest creature. It's yeah, probably going to be the biggest creature on the <laughs> battlefield anytime you cast it. So yeah, I guess it's scary. So um, malignous is a five mana elemental spirit star star. Its power and toughness are each equal to half the highest life total among your opponents rounded up. Damage that would be dealt by Malignus can't be prevented. But we're not actually going to deal damage with Malignus. We're just going to fling Malignus with Minsk and Boo's minus two ability. <laughs> and we're just going to use an enchantment that's either going to triple or double um, or maybe a creature that doubles our damage in order to kill someone with one shot. Um, Malignus being half the highest life total and being able to double the damage of the amount of power that Malignus will have means it doesn't matter if someone's at a million life, you're still going to be able to do a million damage to them. Um, lots of different enchantments you can do this with. Fiery Emancipation is an enchantment that will triple your damage. Dictate of the Twin Gods is an enchantment with Flash that will double your damage. Gisela Blade of Gold Knight is um, a red-white creature that's going to double your damage. So you will have to, you won't have to, uh, you won't be able to have Minsk and Boo as your commander for that one since you do have to include the color white. Angrath's Marauders is a creature that will double your damage. Furnace of Wrath is an enchantment that does not have flash that will double your damage. Um, and the most expensive one out of those is Fiery Emancipation uh, at $25. But uh, even like the Angrath's Marauders one, I know it's on a creature, it's harder to keep up. It's $450. But Dictated the Twin Gods is only $5. And that's an enchantment with flash. So you can actually like, do it in response to malignus targeting someone's face and they'll be like oh yeah no response i don't really care flash out to the twin gods and kill them um so that's pretty cool and i know we're not talking about four card combos but if you put a masswood nexus out there then all of your creatures are hamsters and you get to draw all your cards too just saying oh my gosh <clears throat> this also works really well in a combo that we talked about from Streets of New Capenna mm -hmm. because Minsk and Boo plus Malignus and Fiery Emancipation in this color combination can go in Zia Tora and yes. Zia Tora does the same thing with the Malignus and all of these cards. So if you did decide to put together one of those combo Zia Tora decks, Minsk and Boo can just be added because it it's a second it's it's a secondary commander. This is your secret commander combo. Well, hey, if someone removes your commander four times and you can't cast it anymore, it's wonderful to have this backup. It's a great idea. Yeah, yeah, I like that a lot. Uh, let's shift gears over to mono blue uh, for some really these are these are really affordable actually. So the two combos that we're going to talk about are three dollars and eighteen cents or five dollars and thirty seven cents at the time of recording. And this is with Vol Candlekeep Researcher. So a new legendary creature, uh, a two three human wizard for three and a blue with vigilance that says tap to add any amount of colorless mana equal to Vol Candle. Ca Candle keep researchers toughness. This mana cannot be spent to cast spells from your hand. And Vol can choose a background, so that's cool. So you can 
combine it with the color that you want. Um, <clears throat> if you pair Vol with Staff of Domination or Umbral Mantle, you can basically make infinite colorless mana. Um, you can get infinite life gain, infinite life gain triggers, card draw and draw triggers with Staff of Domination. And then you can essentially get infinite colorless mana and then make Vol infinitely large until end of turn if you're using Umbral Mantle. So Umbral Mantle is an equipment. It Cost three mana, equip for zero, and it says equip creature has pay three and untap this creature. Gets plus two, plus two till end of turn. The downside here is that Vol has to have um, uh, some some higher toughness, and and I believe though you 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 really only need three, which I don't think you need to pump her at all. So you mm -hmm. tap Vol for three, and then you use that three mana to untap with Umbral Mantle, mm -hmm. and then you just. And then you just keep tapping and, and, and untapping. And then you're just going to make infinitely colorless mana. Uh, so if you have a bunch of colorless mana sinks, you can do whatever you want. Um, Staff of Domination specifically, though, does need Vol Candlekeep Researcher to have at least five toughness, though, because you have to be able to untap Staff of Domination. And you also need to be able to untap target creatures. So Staff of Domination is an artifact that is now way more affordable than it used to be before Commander Legends. Uh, but it costs three mana. It has f five abilities. Mm -hmm. So pay one to untap the Staff of Domination. Pay two and tap it to gain a life. Pay three and tap it to untap a creature. Pay four and tap it to tap target creature. And then pay five and tap it, you can draw a card. So essentially, once you get enough mana to be able to uh, increase, um, or I guess at least net an additional mana, you, you make a bunch of mana and then you pump it into all of these abilities. So you can tap down all of your opponent's creatures, you can draw your deck, you can untap Vol as many times as you want, and you can gain infinite life. So um, these being a $3 and a $5 combo is pretty cool if you're looking to build this. And if you did recently watch the the uh, the, the Command Zones uh, Commander Legend Battle for Baldur's Gate uh, episode, mm -hmm. uh, there was a Vol Candlekeep Researcher deck, which is really cool because I would not have put money on this being one of the commanders that, that saw play on the Command Zone. And I'm very happy we got to see a very cool mono blue artifact deck. Yes, yes. And they use the, the background. This won't give away too much but they use the background clan crafter which does allow you to sacrifice artifacts to put plus one plus one counters on vol then you can increase vol's toughness that way and that kind of yep. stuff there's a few different backgrounds that that would work really well with that i i am i keep going back to noble heritage noble heritage seems to be like the one background i keep going that's to. the white one that's the white one for two mana that when your command your commanders have when they enter and uh, at the beginning of your upkeep, each player can put two plus one plus one counters on a creature they control. And if they do, you gain protection from that player until your next turn. Um, because two plus one plus one counters would get Vol right up to that five mana that you need for Staff of Domination right away yeah. as well. So, um, yeah. And then, and then you get another blue-white deck. So I'm sure that's and also then, great. So it's a win-win for me. It's a win-win for that's me. Right. So I guess I, guess I have a... I, I can't I can't build another blue one. <laughs> Not for I got I got I need to wait like five sets, which is only going to be like you know two months, but uh, yeah. it's fine. Mm -hmm. It's yeah. fine. That's true. That's true. Okay, so there's a card that um, I know neither of us have ever built decks around that uh, combo infinitely with just a, an enchantment spell, but this time it's with a dragon. Um, that, that card's called World Gorger Dragon. Very unfamiliar. Oh, I've never heard of, of it. Yes. Never heard of it. Exactly. Nope. So that card is uh, the the brand new card that this is going to combo with is Miriam Sentinel Worms. So this is the, our new Teamer Dragon Spirit for six mana for three green, blue, red. You get a 6-6 six, six dragon spirit with flying and ward 2. It says whenever another non-token dragon enters the battlefield under your control, create a token that's a copy of it, except the token isn't legendary if that dragon is legendary. Um, in combination with World Gorger Dragon, a 6 mana Nightmare Dragon, 3 red 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 for a 7-7 seven, seven with flying trample. It says when World Gorger Dragon enters the battlefield, exile all other permanents you control. When World Gorger Dragon leaves the battlefield, return the exiled cards to the battlefield under their owner's control. So what is going to happen is you're going to have Miram on the battlefield and you're going to cast World Gorger Dragon. World Gorger Dragon is going to enter the battlefield and its first trigger is going to go on the stack. 
holding priority, you're also going to have a Miram's trigger on the stack. Um, and you're going to, uh, while all these triggers are on the stack, you can tap all of your rocks and all of your lands um, for mana because those are about to blink out of existence and come back into existence so that you can tap them again and produce infinite mana. So you're going to resolve your Miram trigger before the World Gorger Dragon enter the battlefield trigger resolves, thus creating a token copy of World Gorger Dragon. That world Gorger Dragons enter the battlefield trigger is then going to go on the stack above everything else and will resolve, exiling all of your permanents except your token copy of world Gorger Dragon. After that happens, your now delayed co- uh, uh, trigger of your original world Gorger Dragon on the stack is going to resolve, exiling all of your permanents, which is now only the token copy of world Gorger Dragon. Then both of your dragons are going to enter the battlefield at the same time. They will see each other. You'll be able to get a token copy of world Gorger Dragon and continue that combo over and over and over again um and that and the way you stop the combo is you stack your triggers in a different way at the end and that's it now you have infinite mana in your team or dragons deck yeah did you know this is the most popular commander according to eda track for commander legend battle for Baldur's gate i, I am not surprised not that surprised. dragons made it number one D- yeah dra- double dragon is what it is <laughs> Yeah, Double Dragon made it to number one. This this commander also has a lot of combos on the website, oh, yeah. and it combos with so many things, so many very complicated combos. So if you're also looking for this, you can you can find a lot of Miriam Sentinel Worm combos on on the website too. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, definitely. Yeah, all for eighteen dollars. All for eighteen dollars, you can do this combo. <laughs> World Gorger being so expensive. <laughs> yeah, World Gorger being expensive, and it's had a reprint too. So yeah, you know, we'll see. We'll see if it gets reprinted again because it really it tends to be a card where if you're running it, you're running the combo. You're not really just. It's I know, not a generic dragon. I I ran it as a generic dragon in my mono red deck, and that's where you first saw it and reanimated it out of my graveyard. I remember. Yeah, let's tell that story real quick. We were just playing at the LGS, and I remember seeing i remember hearing about the combo and then it made it to your graveyard and so i was like explain this combo to me and mike explains this this very convoluted combo and i go cool reanimate it and he goes oh man yeah I'll, i guess you win because mm-hmm. because <laughs> i had all the other stuff i needed for it so anyway crazy stuff let's talk about another combo this one's in blue with the cutest cat probably in all of magic now and this is displacer kitten a 2-2 cat beast for three and a blue that says whenever you cast a non-creature spell exile up to one target non-land permanent you control then return that card to the battlefield under its owner's control <clears throat> so people are referring to this online as as the um per paradox engine mm-hmm. um because it, it plays very much like paradox engine and that you're gonna pretty much combo off and go infinite um which is what a lot of decks needed um if it wasn't you know if it if it like needed one extra oomph push uh right, displacer right. kitten can kind of do that with it being in blue probably won't be a huge menace um it, you know across the format uh, might be a menace in some competitive decks but this combo's with a lot of of cards and combos there's 21 combos as of the time of recording this um we're only going to go over a few here um but it it also has spiked in price recently so displacer kitten was six dollars when we were prepping the episode displacer kittens now almost twenty dollars at the time of recording from when we were prepping the episode um <clears throat> but this goes infinite with with uh some planeswalkers so that's what we're going to talk about today so if you combine displacer kitten with teferi time raveler and soul ring you're going to end up with drawing your entire deck infinite colorless mana uh infinite draw triggers and infinite storm count so teferi time raveler is a very friendly not oppressive commander not um, uh, card uh so it is uh three mana one a white and a blue four loyalty uh static ability each opponent can only cast spell at a uh, time that they can cast sorceries so Boom. you really can't interact um <clears throat> once you've got this going and has two abilities plus one until your next turn you may cast sorcery spells as though they had flash that's pretty cool and then minus three return an artifact creature or enchantment to its owner's hand and you draw a card so all you have to do is have displacer kitten out and the teferi time raveler and then you need to have soul ring in in your hand which i will say will be the struggle but um you can if if it's later in the game you can just return it to your hand with teferi time raveler um by minus by minus three to fairy. So essentially here you play soul ring 
And Displacer Kitten is going to say, okay, you cast a non-creature spell, you can basically blink a non-land permanent. So you're going to tap the Soul Ring for two mana, and then you're going to blink uh, um, the Teferi Time Raveler. And you're going to return a non non um, the artifact, I'm sorry, the artifact to your hand. So you tap your Soul Ring, you're going to minus three Teferi, return Soul Ring to your hand. And then you play a Soul Ring down, Displacer Kitten is going to trigger, you're going to bounce the Teferi, and then return Soul Ring to your hand with Teferi again. And each time you're netting an additional colorless mana, and you're also drawing a card. Um, mm -hmm. it's, it's real good. It's really, really good. Um, <clears throat> you can do some blue-green if you uh, want to play with Tamyo, Collector of Tales, and a Lotus Petal. Mm -hmm. So all you have to do is have Tamyo out and a Lotus Petal in your hand. So Tamyo is a planeswalker for two, a green and a blue. It has two abilities. Um, specifically, we're gonna look at the minus three. It says return target card from your graveyard to your hand. So if you uh, play the Lotus Petal, you can blink your Tamio. Uh, Tamio resets, and then you minus three Tamio to return the Lotus Petal from your graveyard to your hand. So Lotus Petal has sacrifice it, you can add a mana of any color to mana pool. So you sacrifice it and then bring it back with Tamio. You play the Lotus Petal, you, you blink the Tamio, and so you kind of rinse and repeat. And this one gets you infinite any color mana that you would like, mm -hmm. an infinite storm count. And finally, you can do this with Tezzeret Master the Bridge and Lotus Petal. So this is in blue-black. Um, so it's the same steps essentially because Tezzeret does the same thing as Tamio, except instead of just returning a card, this one says you can return target artifact from your graveyard to your hand. So again, you play the Lotus Petal, you blink the Tezzeret, you sack the Lotus Petal, um, and then you bring it back with Tezzeret. And you here you get to make infinite colored mana and storm count again. Um, these combos are now more expensive because the displacer kittens are on twenty dollars when mm -hmm. it was like six ish when we were when we were prepping it so now these combos are like forty dollars in the case of tezret it's like it's more like fifty ish mm -hmm. over fifty dollars so this is no longer really affordable because they were like 20 mm -hmm. and 20 is pushing it when you're looking at something that like is it going to come together is this kind of a meme right i don't think that they're all very memeish but i do think that uh the tezret one is the, uh, being the most expensive, not the one that I would play. I'm probably going to be playing with Teferi if I were to do that. That's what I would do yeah. because it already seems like a very difficult to interact with combo. Oh. So I might as well make it more difficult to yeah. interact with. Ne nearly impossible. I mean, even if you think about it, if, if you're thinking, oh, well, at least Teferi blinks and you'll have an instance to re to respond to it in between. No, the ability has to resolve and, and the ability resolves with Teferi being back on the battlefield. So you won't be able to actually respond in between it being gone yeah. so yeah no i think that one definitely is the strongest um yeah it's crazy I'm, i've thrown displacer kitten in like eight decks so far but none of them for infinite combos this card is just really good for value too this is so good what value a good, what a good kitty um okay this next one's kind of just uh it's kind of it's kind of dumb uh, but i love it <laughs> it just does what it does it really does so this is involving duke alder raven guard this is a new legendary creature that we got a human noble soldier for six mana four a red and a white you get a five five this is the beginning of combat on your turn another target creature you control gains haste and myriad until end of turn this 14 cent card combos with this 77 dollars <laughs> and 65 cent card called Blightsteel Colossus, a 12 mana <laughs> artifact creature golem with 11 power, 11 toughness, trample, infect, and indestructible that said if Blightsteel Colossus would be put into a graveyard from anywhere, reveal Blightsteel Colossus and shuffle it into its owner's library instead. So what you're going to do is you're going to have both of these permanents on the battlefield. You're going to move to combat. You're going to give all of your Blightsteels haste, um, and then you're going to kill all of your opponents with them. Um, or actually, you give your one Blightsteel haste. It swings. It creates two more then those will kill all of your opponents. And I don't know exactly how the rules interaction would work, but I believe if one of your token copies, if you sacrifice it in any way, you get like free deck shuffles because it doesn't actually go to your graveyard, but it still dies. So, you know, shuffle your deck for free. <laughs> yeah, I do like that the prerequisite is they're, they're on the battlefield and your opponents are unable to block or kill your creatures. That's they, just... can have, they can have one toughness and it still works. Don't worry. Yeah, this, this for the for 12, 13, 14... So for 18 mana, 
Mm -hmm. and $77. You too could have this (laughs) Boros combo. Just it was sneak attack at two red mana and just sneak both of these, both of these creatures out. Sure. Now it's a three card combo. (laughs) (laughs) All right. I want to talk about uh, infinite combats. We we didn't get to do it yet this episode. So Barakos party leader, uh, when you combine it with aggravated assault and gold span dragon is, is, is going to give you infinite combat phases and also infinite life loss to your opponents, which is really cool. So Barakos party leader is from the, uh, the actual party time pre-con. So this is one of those alternate commanders there. It's a two, four orc for three and a black and it, is considered a cleric rogue warrior and a wizard so uh it can fit any of those those party slots and it says whenever barakos attacks defending player loses x life and you create x treasure tokens where x is the number of creatures in your party um when you combine that with aggravated assault which is an enchantment for two and a red and it uh it has pay three red red untap all creatures you control after this phase there's an additional combat phase followed by an additional main phase play this uh, ability only time you could uh, play a sorcery and then combine that with goldspan dragon so goldspan dragon still really good Mm -hmm. uh turns out it's a four four flying haste dragon uh for three red red and it says whenever it attacks or becomes the target of a spell um create a treasure token and then it says treasure tokens you control have tap sack this artifact add two mana of any one color nice so essentially, you just have to have all the permanents on the battlefield, and you need at least three creatures in your party. So Barakos counts as one, so you're still going to need something to kind of make fill out the rest of that party. But mm-hmm. um, the nice thing is you don't even have to attack with the, um, the gold span dragon here. Um, you, you only have to attack with your commander. So um, <clears throat> you attack with your commander, uh, defending player is going to lose X life, and you're going to create X treasures for X the number of creatures in your party. So you need three creatures in your party to make at least three treasures. Those three treasures, because of gold span dragon, are going to tap for six mana. So mm-hmm. then you can pay for that aggravated assault to continue to get combats. So the problem here with the combat, with the combo like this, is you usually have to target one player until you can kind of gain enough momentum to kind of get something going um and and you're just going to continue to sack your treasures and uh get infinite combat phases the the problem here is your opponent can't be able to kill and block the barakos party leader if they can you're you're going to have to find a way around it yeah. or, or you're going to take out the other two people and the person who was able to block and kill barakos will at least get a turn to try to you know deal with the situation Mm -hmm. yeah it's it's difficult right because it's on the ground it's only for toughness brockos doesn't pump himself or anything like that so it's not the most bulletproof but i do really like this combo and i love that it's in two colors i mean we could talk about token doublers all day for treasures in green and stuff but that would expand this to three colors the fact that brockos could be your commander here with a red background and you can still play this combo um i think zorn would work the same way because that doubles your treasure tokens as well so yeah brockos has quite quite a few combos as well there's nine combos on commander spellbook right yeah. now um it works really well with najila um, oh yeah if you have cards if you're playing it in a deck because it's it's a warrior it sure because is. of the party so it works in najila so any najila deck could just add barakos if you really wanted to mm-hmm. um but it works with aggravated assault and zorn does the same 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 deal as as gold span dragon because you're going to make double the treasures so right. instead of you know making just Treasures that tap for, the, for two. Yeah. C- correct. So if you would make one or more and create, you know, plus an additional. So eventually you'll 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 end up netting with Zorn too. So yeah, really cool that it can be your commander. And there's a lot of cool red um red backgrounds. They you know, they might play out a little differently mm-hmm. uh, depending on which ones you pick. Definitely. So Jan Jansen, Chaos Crafter. Um, if you saw this card, you probably thought artifact combo, artifact combo, artifact combo. And you're right. Because that's what Jan Jansen Chaos Crafter is. For three mana, a red, a white, and a black, you get a gnome artificer 3-3 three, three with haste with two activated abilities. Tap it, sacrifice an artifact creature to create two treasure tokens, or tap it and sacrifice a non-creature artifact to create two 1-1 one, one colorless uh, construct artifact creature tokens. So there's two main strategies here um, for infinitely comboing with Jan Jansen. One of them involves adding blue which is a little bit 
you know, difficult. That means Jan Jansen can't be your commander or you have to steal this permanent in some way, but that's intruder alarm. A three mana enchantment that says creatures don't untap during their controller's untap steps. And whenever a creature comes into play, untap all creatures. So what you're going to do is you're going to start the combo by creating two creatures. Uh, you're going to get two triggers of intruder alarm to untap all of your creatures. Um, with one of them resolving, you can untap and then you can tap it uh, to to kill the other one, create some treasure tokens. It'll untap and you'll be able to continue the loop infinitely. Um, but staying within the colors, you're going to be able to do something very similar um, with with liquid metal torque or sorry, with clock of omens. And, and clock of omens is really the thing that's going to uh, bring this combo uh, together in staying within the Mardu colors. And Clock of Omens is a four mana enchantment. This is tap two untapped artifacts you control to untap target artifact. Now we're going to use this actually to untap Jan Jansen, but Jan Jansen is an artificer, not an artifact. So we are going to use something to turn him into an artifact. We have uh, four different ways of doing it. We have Liquid Metal Torque, which is a mana rock printed in Modern Horizons 2 that can tap to turn a non-land uh, permanent into an artifact. Um, liquid Metal Coating, which is also an artifact that can tap to turn uh, any permanent into an artifact. So this one could uh, turn a land into it, but again, we're using it to turn Jan Jansen into an artifact. Mycosynth Lattice, which is uh, an artifact that turns everything into artifacts. Uh, and one that's actually not included on the Commander Spellbook website, but I know works because I know this card and it's Ashnod's Transmogrant. And my challenge to you is to go on over to the Discord <laughs> for Spellbook and submit this as a combo because this does work the same way. Ashnod's Transmogrant is a one mana artifact. You can tap it and sacrifice it to put a plus one, plus one counter on target non-artifact creature. That creature becomes an artifact in addition to its other types. So by using this and Clock of Omens and the artifacts that Jan Jansen creates by sacrificing other artifacts, you'll be able to continuously untap Jan Jansen and have as many enter the battlefield, leave the battlefield, death triggers, token generation, um, combo it with things. Uh, you're going to have infinite uh, treasures. You're going to have infinite mana. You can combo it with like a Zulaport Cutthroat for infinite drain. So many things you can do with it with, with infinite artifact and creatures being removed and entering the battlefield. Huh. <laughs> and we're in Mardu. We're in Mardu doing yeah. fun, fun things again. Um, I know that we don't give a lot of love to Mardu here on this show. It's true. And for no reason, just because we just don't have one. We just don't have Mardu decks. Mm -hmm. um, so Jan Jansen's really cool. There's also a lot more combos on uh, Commander Spellbook. If you want to look them up, there are a lot of four card combos that include cards like Cart Clan Ironworks, Pitiless Plunderer, Sword of the Parents. You know, there's, there's a lot going on. <laughs> There's a lot going. You can do a lot with I'm just, Jan Jansen. I'm just, I'm just looking. I'm just looking at all of the other combos we wrote notes for. It's like, well, there's like, there's like, there's like two more episodes here, Andy. <laughs> Four. Let's count five, <laughs> six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, seven. There's seventeen more combos listed in our show notes, um, and. <clears throat> Uh, we can't get to all of them. Okay. Okay. Let's go to the very, very last one because it's also really easy. It's yes, very yes. much like like the previous Boros ones. This is Legion Loyalty Enchantment, six white, white. So it costs eight mana. It says creatures you control have myriad. So when they attack, you make a token copy attacking each other player that it wasn't wasn't swinging at. If you combine that with Blightsteel Colossus, which uh, we mentioned earlier, an 11-11 Trample Infect Indestructible Golem for 12 mana, um, you, you can essentially swing at your opponents for the low, low cost of 20 mana, two permanents, and $77. <laughs> but hey, it's a showstopper, and when it works, it's going to work. So there's really nothing special here. It's just play out Legion Loyalty, hope, uh, maybe before turn eight, and then Blightsteel Colossus needs to come in and have haste somehow. So whether you cheat it out or whatever you're doing, mm -hmm. um, if, you, if you do that and then just swing, you likely win as long as your opponent doesn't have more than two toughness. So <laughs> it um, is, it is also <laughs> noting that Legion loyalty does not grant haste like the previous does combo does. So you're going to have to let it sit for a turn. It's not going to get pathed or sword on turn 12 when you cast this, uh, uh, you know, on, on, on curve, <laughs> you did eight on, on, on turn eight, you did Legion loyalty on turn 12. You did blight steel on turn 13. As long as there's not enough toughness, you got this. Turn 13 win. Here you go. This in, mono, in mono white. No, no it, less. It, you could, it is in mono white. This is a mono white combo. So everybody, if you want to check out these combos further or check out any of the other combos that we didn't get to go over today, head over to commanderspellbook.com for these and more. We will also, like I mentioned before, have the link to join their Discord server in the, in the show notes below. So please go join. 
tell them we sent you. Coil actually already gave you a combo that you can submit yep. so that you can already get that contributor uh, tag in the in their Discord server. Um, and as always, I'm on Twitter at Andy Flory if you and, want to talk to me. And I'm on Twitter at Worm Coil Engine if you want to try to at me and I'll respond a couple days later. Uh, <laughs> of course, we want to give a special thanks to Ryan Nichols and Chris Wolf who handles um, our, our all of our production and our graphic art and everything behind the scenes. So thank you so much to the both of you and to all of you who are listening out there. Um, thank you so much. I hope you keep listening. Um, and yeah, we'll, we'll be back next week next week. Bye, everybody. Bye-bye.